Hi everyone, it's me, Spring the Fiber Enthusiast, and welcome to the channel. As you've seen in the thumbnail and the title, we are going to be making some baby booties, or baby socks, if you will. Um, I'm using a worsted weight and a 2.75 circular needle. Um, you can use DP DPNs if you'd like. If you want to increase the size, just go up a size or two in your needle. Um, that will increase the size, the overall size, a little bit at a time without increasing the stitches and the pattern. This is worsted weight yarn, so you can go up a lot in needle size and still have the same result, just a little bigger with each needle size. So, um, a total for a pair is about 14 grams of yarn. It does not take much at all. You can do this many ways. You could do the heel and the toe and the cuff all in the same color. You can do the whole sock in a solid color, or you can do like I did here with just the cuff one color and the rest of the sock the other color. Now I will show you one that is a solid. We will be working the second one to this pair. So I've got it on this uh, newborn size doll. It's a little bit bigger than no newborn, but not by much. And of course, you know, it's a stiff plastic, so it is not very easy to get on, but you can see here um, it on the, on the doll. So let me, it's got, uh, this is what the feet look like the bottom of the feet so very wide right here um so going up a needle size for this particular set would be great um because this is a very wide and chunky foot um <laughs> so any rate what i did them in is the 2.75 a uh, circular needle. That's what I will be doing this one in with you today. So let's go ahead and talk about some more of the things you need. We talked about the needle. You can use DPNs if you want. You'll need a stitch marker just only to mark the beginning and end of the round. You'll need a needle to sew in your ends, a pair of scissors, and of course, some worsted weight yarn of your choice. Um, I used some Premier Basics for this one, and up here at the cuff was I Love This Yarn by Hobby Lobby. What I'm going to be using for the teal is, I believe it's either Mainstay or Red Heart. It's nothing super expensive or anything like that. Just some standard run of the mill yarn. So you're gonna cast on 20 stitches and you're gonna cast on in your favorite cast on method. Now for me, it's the slingshot long tail cast on. I do have tutorials on how to cast on in multiple different ways. So we're just going to cast on 20 stitches and separate them to work magic loop. I'm going to go ahead and continue casting on those 20 stitches and I'll come back and show you how we separate those stitches. All right, so now I have my 20 stitches cast on. I'm just going to slide it down onto the cable, oh, about halfway or so. And now I'm gonna count over 10 stitches. So half the amount of stitches, two, four, six, eight, and 10. And what I'm gonna do is separate those stitches, bending my cable in half, slide 10 stitches on each side of that bend. Now what I can do is grab those stitches and just slide that up onto my needles turn my work so that way I can see my stitches. Now when I do that, I want to make sure that the tail and a working yarn are on the back needle because we're going to be working onto the front needle to start with so that will join them in the round. Another thing that you want to make sure of 
is your working yarn that comes from your ball of yarn isn't below your needles. You want to make sure you come up between your needles and over the top before you start working. So now we're gonna slide that the rest of the way down onto the needles so that way we can make sure everything is nice and straight. I'm gonna zoom back in so that way you can see up close again. So we wanna make sure that the ridge of our cast on stitches is all on the bottom side here. And here you can see that yarn coming from between the needles up and over that back needle. So now I'm gonna place a stitch marker on the back needle to, sig uh, to signify that that is the beginning of the round. I'm gonna hold those stitches, pulling that back needle out into working position. So now I have everything set up and ready to go. All right, so we are going to work a one by one ribbing. That just simply means that you're going to knit one and purl one. So knit one and purl one. And you're gonna work that all the way to the end of these 10 stitches and then turn your work, your needles over and repeat on the other side. That is if your magic loop, if you are working on DPNs, you would just work through your needles. All right, last stitch on the first 10 is a purl. So I'm gonna drop that, turn it over. Gonna pull that cable and needle up into working position. Now I'm gonna make sure that my working yarn is up over that back needle from in between and pull the back needle forward and into working position. Now I'm ready to continue on. The last stitch of the other side was a purl, so we begin with a knit stitch. Knit one and purl one. So I just wanna kinda of go over this briefly with you in case you don't know how to work Magic Loop. Now I do have a very, very simple beginner hat teaching specifically Magic Loop. Um, if you want to make a hat as well. Okay, so we're just going to keep working our knit one, purl one. Now you're going to do the one by one ribbing for 10 rounds, just like we're doing here. Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, all the way around for 10 rounds. There we go. Okay. Then you just turn your work over and move your stitch marker when you come to it to the next needle. Okay, so that is round one complete. I'm gonna go ahead and do nine more rounds off camera and I will be back to show you how to do the next steps. Okay, so once you have your 10 rounds of one by one ribbing, the next step is we're gonna work what would be considered the leg. If you are working a full-size sock, this would be considered the leg. You're gonna work two full rounds of knit only. So knit every stitch all the way around for two full rounds, at which point I will meet back up with you and we will do the heel of the sock. Okay, so for the heel, now if you wanted to make that leg portion larger, you know, longer, by all means do so. This is just what I did to accomplish this size little baby booty. And this is newborn, really tiny. All right, so 
<clears throat> now we're going to work the heel, and the, the whole heel will be worked over the course of one half of your stitches, so 10 stitches. And in reality, we're going to work three stitches on this side and three stitches on this side, and the center will continue to just be either knit or purl. We're going to do a shadow wrap and turn style heel. If you want to do something different and you're more confident in um, working up just whatever heel that you like to work, by all means, please do so. This is not just the only way that it can be done. It is subject to change to your liking. So let's go ahead and get into the heel the way that I've done the heel in the samples shown. So I'm going to knit to one stitch left on my needle. I'm just going to knit all the way across. And now these heels with only 10 stitches are going to work up really fast. And before you know it, you will be on the foot of the little booty or baby sock. So this is pretty basic um, sock making here. You have a cuff, you have a leg, you have a heel, and then a foot and a toe. That's pretty, pretty basic here. All right, so what I have, I have one stitch left over here. I'm just going to slip it, move the yarn to the front of my work, slip that stitch back over to that needle, and move my yarn back to the back side so it'll be in purl position. All right, so we'll do that again on the other side, um, the other end. So now we're just going to purl to one stitch left on our needle, and then we'll repeat that same thing just on the purl side. So again, we're just gonna purl these stitches all the way to the end. Now we're gonna do what we're doing for three stitches. And this is the uh, part that you decrease your stitches. So here we are coming up to the last stitch. All right, so we have one stitch left. Our yarn is in the front because we were purling. Gonna keep it there. You're gonna slip that last stitch over move the yarn to the back and replace your stitch back onto the left needle and then bring that working yarn back to the purl side of your work. Turn your work over. And now this time we're going to knit to two stitches left on the needle. So we're gonna do one left on the needle, two left on the needle, three left on the needle, and then we will increase back out. So here we are, we're just gonna knit to two left on our left needle. Keep on the sunny side. <laughs> All right, so here we are, we are at two left. We're gonna wrap and turn this heel here or this stitch here so our yarn stays on the purl side of our work for this stitch you slip that stitch over move the yarn to the front as if to purl slip that stitch back over to the left and transfer your working yarn to the purl side of your work again so it wraps around that stitch. Okay, turn your work and purl to two left on your left needle. Okay, so that's the shadow wrap and turn here. And that is for decreasing. So here we come up to two left on the needle. Once again, my yarn is in the front. I'm going to slip that stitch over, move the yarn to the back, slip the stitch back, and move that yarn back to the front of the work. 
Now I'm going to turn my work over and we're going to knit three stitches left on the left needle. All right, let's work our way over. There's three stitches left. I'm just going to slip that third stitch over, transfer my yarn to the front, slip that stitch back to my left needle, and move that yarn back to the back of the work, the purl side. Now I'm going to turn my work over, and I'm going to purl my way over to three stitches before the end of the work, or three stitches left on my needle. Okay, so you have a purl side and you have a knit side that you're working through on the heel. As I said, this works pretty fast because you're only decreasing and increasing on three stitches. So here we are. Once again, I'm going to slip that stitch over to the right needle, move my yarn to the back, slip that stitch back to the left needle and move my yarn back to the front of the work, wrapping around that needle. So that was our decreases. Now we're going to increase. All right, so to increase, we are going to knit over to the third stitch left on our needle here. Okay, so we have three stitches left on our left needle. So here is that wrap that we wrapped around the needle. We're gonna pick that up and place it up there with the stitch it's wrapped around on the left needle and knit those two together. Okay, so now we need to wrap our next stitch the same as we've been doing. We're going to slip it over, bring the yarn to the front, slip it back, and pass the yarn to the back of the work again. Now we can turn our work over and begin the purl side. Okay, so now we're going to purl our way over to three stitches left on our left needle. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pick up that wrapped stitch. Now, sometimes when you're picking up the wrapped stitch from the purl side, it's easier to turn your work around so you can see the knitted side. And then you can see that wrapped stitch. And all I do is reach down and pick it up with my needle here. Just like that. Now I can turn my work back around and purl those two together. So purling those two together. Now we need to wrap the next stitch. So we need to transfer it, slip it over to the right needle, pass the yarn behind the stitch, slip the stitch back to the left needle, and bring that yarn back to the front of the work. Turn your work around, and we're gonna repeat this same procedure until we are down to one stitch wrapped left. So now we're gonna knit over to two stitches left on the left needle, at which point we're going to pick up two wraps. So if you look here, we have the last wrap made. We're gonna place that up onto that needle. And then we have the wrap prior that we need to place up onto that needle. That gives us three stitches to go through, all in one go. Okay, 
And now we need to wrap that last stitch. So same thing as we've done, we're gonna slip that stitch over, bring the yarn to the front, pass that stitch back, and bring your yarn to the back of the work once again. Now you'll see that there's this leg here. When you work your purl stitches, you're gonna tighten that up. It's just from wrapping around that stitch. So I've got it tightened up. I'm gonna purl over to two stitches left on my left needle. And to get this nice and tight, I want to make sure that I pay close attention to this stitch. There we go, get it nice and tight. All right, now I'm gonna purl back to two stitches before the end here. This part's gonna be a little lengthy because of the fact that we're going over this heel. All right, again, I'm going to turn my work to the knitted side so I can see those wraps. Now bear in mind that there is two wraps to pick up. So I'm gonna go under the first one and the second one. Just like that. Now I can turn my work back around and purl all three of those together. And it can be a little tedious to make sure you get all of those stitches purled together. Okay, so once you have all of those purled together, you're gonna slip it off and now we're going to wrap that last stitch. So we're gonna slip it over move the yarn to the back, slip it back, and bring our yarn back to the front. Turn your work around. Okay, so now we're going to work these last stitches together. I'm gonna to zoom out just a hair. Same concept. We're going to work over to this last stitch here, pick up those wrapped loops place them on the needle, and then knit them together. Then we're gonna carry on knitting in the round and begin the foot. When we come back around to this wrapped stitch here, that's when we will pick up those wraps from this stitch that we just wrapped. We will handle it on the completion of this next round. So I'm just gonna knit over Pick up those two wraps and knit all three together. The stitch and the two wraps. Okay, so here we are. I'm gonna pick up one and two. And now I'm gonna knit those together. And again, it's going to be a little bit cumbersome. There we go. Okay, so I've got that last one knitted. Now what I'm gonna do is turn my work and work down this side of the stitches. Going back to working in the round at this point. And from all the tugging on the stitches, that one was a little bit tight. There we go. Okay, now I'm just gonna knit to the end of this set of 10.
Okay, so remember I said that we would handle this last uh, wrap and turn in the round. So here we are, we're back around to it. Once again, we're gonna pick up those wraps and place them up onto the needle. That was one, and that is two. And then you will knit all three of those together. Okay, so once you have all three knitted together, you're gonna pop those off and you're gonna continue to work in the round. Now, once again, if you find that it seems a little small for what you need, you can go more than 15 rounds. I will meet back up with you and show you how to work the toe and close it up. All right, once you have your 15 rounds or how many ever rounds you choose for the foot itself, we're going to do the decreases for the toe. Now this happens every round being that it is a little baby sock. Now we decrease at four points. We slip, slip, knit, knit two together and then we go slip, slip, knit, knit two together. That is your decreases. At the beginning of the row, you slip, slip, knit. Now I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this. I've shown in several other knitting videos on decreases how I do slip, slip, knit, but I'm also going to show you the standard slip, slip, knit is to slip, the stitch as if to knit and slip the stitch as if to knit and then you knit those two together okay so that is i'll show you on the next slip slip knit how i do it that is the standard slip slip knit ssk so now we're going to knit to the last two and knit two together so we're going to Go ahead and knit all the way to the last two stitches, at which point you knit those two together. Now we're gonna turn it over here. And now I'm gonna show you how I do slip, slip, knit. Let's get that on. Here we are. All right, so I, go into the first stitch as if to knit. Then I tip my work towards me and I go into the back leg of the second stitch. There we are, like this. So the back leg of the second stitch and now what I do is yarn around and knit through both of those. You wanna make sure that you get both of those stitches when you knit it. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult on these really tight stitches like this. There we go, I got it. So you wanna make sure that you're through both of those stitches so when you pop them off, they don't start to unravel. And then we're going to knit to the last two stitches of the row and knit two together. Now you're gonna do that until you have a total of two stitches on each needle. So a total of four stitches all the way around. Begin the row with slip, slip, knit in the row with knit two together. Continue working that until you are down to two stitches on each needle, a total of four stitches. I will meet back up with you and show you how to finish it off. All right, now you have made it to the very tippy tip of your sock. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our darning needle, cut away from our working ball of yarn, leaving a tail long enough to sew in the ends. Sew a good, oh, 
five, six inches is sufficient. All right, so we're just gonna kind of figure eight some stitches here. So I have it ready. I'm bringing it down between my needles and to the front. Now I'm gonna pick up this next stitch as if to knit. I'm gonna pick it up and pass my tail through that stitch. Now I'm gonna go back here to the needle, to the stitch on my back needle, and I'm gonna insert my darning needle and tail th yarn here through as if to purl. I'm gonna pull that through. Then I'm gonna come back around that front needle and pop off as if to knit, pop off that first stitch here, okay? So now I'm gonna pass my needle and tail through as if to knit that next stitch. There we are. I'm gonna pop off the first stitch of the back needle. So I'm inserting my needle and tail thread through as if to purl, popping that off like that, inserting my needle into the next stitch as if to purl, and I'm gonna bring it back between around, and now I'm just gonna pop these two stitches off one at a time, passing the tail and tail, uh, needle and tail thread through, just like that. Now all I'm gonna do is take the needle and tail thread and pull it down good and tight, insert my needle into one of the closest stitches to where the tail is coming from, just like that. Let me get it in there and turn the sock inside out. Bring your tail all the way through, pull the tip of that sock all the way nice and tight. You can work the seams that you decreased work them up so that way everything is inside out. There we go. So that way it looks as if it was right side out. You wanna be able to see everything here. And then just weave in your tails back and forth until it is finished. Once you have woven in your tails, you are done. You will just have to make your second little sock. Now, these absolutely could be made two at a time. Um, that is completely up to you. So if you are used to doing two at a time socks, you are more than welcome to do two at a time. It's very versatile. You can do lots of different things with these little socks. My little pattern here is basically just a suggestion and a way to get you started. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off sewing this up, put it on the little baby along with the other one that matches. I will insert a picture at the end of this tutorial of that baby uh, with both socks on. In the meantime, I hope that you have had a wonderful time visiting during this tutorial. Please, by all means, if you make a set of little baby booties, I would love to see it. You can share over on our Facebook group. You can also share it in an email or tag me on Instagram. All of those are down in the description box where you can find those links to send those pictures in. Now, if you're going to join the Facebook group, 
please answer the security questions. That is the fastest way to get into the group. Otherwise, I have to check out your profile. And if I can't see that you have Yarny groups related or anything like that, then unfortunately, you will probably not get approved. Um, most people answer the security questions. All right, so here we go. Here is the solid. And once again, I'll show you the two color set that I have here. So here we go. And if you wanna make it a little bit larger, you just go up a needle size. Just a quick reminder there. All right, everyone, be blessed, be a blessing. And until next time, bye for now.